Shabam Shadik, All Elements Mix Show, J Ronan Podcast. Make sure you check out both of those. Make sure you tune in and listen to the to the gems. All right, salute. What up, ladies and gentlemen? I got one of the illest, one of my favorite MCs. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Once again, it's the DJ J Ronan. All Elements Mix Show and the J Ronan Podcast. And I got S Dub Shabam Sadiq in the building. In the building. Streaming out of uh what part of Georgia? Kanye's. Kanye's, right? Back in Blade King's Barbershop. We in right. the back of Blade, Blade King's, King's Barbershop. Barbershop. That's your barbershop that you own. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Blood, sweat, and tears. Right, black owned barbershop. First of all, two L's to all my family. Two L's from across the world. Two L's, two J's, both sides. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I, Congratulations uh, on the barbershop. How long you had it uh, going now? Um, we going on our third year now. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Third year in operation. Mm -hmm. um, looking to be here like another year. And then I wanna I wanna switch locations, man. I wanna I wanna go in closer to the uh to the city. Because okay. you know, right now I'm 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 like I'm like in a rural area in, in Georgia, you know, close to where I live at, which is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? I got a I right. got a good clientele, some good people working with me, but eventually I wanna take it into the city more, you know, closer to where every bit everybody be at when they come in for A3C and come in and visit and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because right. a lot of people can't get out here. I'm like 35 minutes east. That's, that's not that far. It's not. To, to me, you know what I'm saying? To me, it's not that far. I, I go into the city. I train to Manhattan from Brooklyn. And listen, I go into the city every day, but for some reason, people out here be like, oh, you and Conyers? Oh, that's far. It's, it's only 35 minutes. They probably don't got a car. That's the problem. Man, people be having cars. They just be lazy, bro. I used to drive, I used to drive all the way to Delaware just to see chicks. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to Philly just to go to open mics. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if you really want to go, you're gonna go. There's nothing stopping you. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Only 35 minutes. Word. But anyway, shout out to Blade Kings. You got a barber shop. Yes, sir. Barber, you also a painter. A very dope painter. Yeah. I ain't getting no paints for the studio yet, but it's okay. Nah, I got you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I I've been um I've been gathering paintings, you know, since the pandemic. I've been finishing joints and putting them to the side because I want to do a mm -hmm. big our show in August, and I right. found a space down here, a gallery that's willing to host it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do like a three night event. Mm. I'm, just, I'm just trying to juggle my schedule and and figure out exactly when I want to do it. Cause you know I got a um I got a virtual tour with John Jiggs that jump off mm. uh, this month, and then John Jiggs, he's always getting spins on the radio show. Yeah, John J's got a virtual tour on part of that. It's gonna be on Color TV. Um, we got a few dates this month. And then um, you know, July 4th, we got a show in um in um uh, in St. Louis. And then on the 16th of July, I start my tour with um Pause One on the West Coast. Okay, so we nice. go like 10 days from the 16th to the 23rd. Damn, I want to go. Who, who's been in? Um, really, we just rolling, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of West Coast uh, DJs, and just to cut course, we was gonna have you know one of them dudes out there spin. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's always love to bring your own DJs and and people that you fuck with, but sometimes you know doing these tours, especially getting back in the motion of tours, you gotta cut some course. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, you know, I'm I'm vaccinated. I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, I already had COVID. I'm not. I wasn't scared to get the vaccine. You know. Nah, yeah, I'm about to get my vaccine too. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? I'm covered. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. By the way, I see you rocking the FX clothing brand. That's your brand, correct? Yeah, the name of my brand is Marvial. FX, this was just a line that I was doing. I wanted to freak the Mets and um and New York Knicks colors. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Also, you know that if you if you take a look at it, it's I flipped the um epic mm. logo. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Just a concept, you know what I'm saying? And then right. I called the ethics. So this is like one of the lines and shit, but you know, we definitely got some new right. stuff coming for Marvel. We got like some tech shorts, you know what I'm saying? We got the Terry Cloth shorts. Nice. Um, you know, some new t-shirts and stuff. Definitely go to Marvel Apparel on IG. Mm. You'll see a lot of the new stuff. Marvialapparel.com. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Knicks too. They actually doing pretty good. They're right. like fourth right fourth. now, Eastern Conference. Listen, I was futuristic picking these colors, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Good. That's right, baby. And the, the Brooklyn Nets are doing good too. Mm-hmm. You got two teams. I really, I really would like the Brooklyn Nets to win, you know what I'm saying? Just so we can have that parade in Brooklyn. But either way, either way, you know what I'm saying? I'm good with either teams winning. Yeah, yeah. Knicks hasn't won a championship since before I was born. I think the last championship they won was in 1973. Right. So that I think it'll be really, really good for the city. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard being a Knicks fan. I know. <laughs> it's like it's hard being a Browns fan. You know what I'm saying? Are you a Brown fan? Nah, I'm just saying though, okay. like, you know what I mean? It's like, damn, can we win one? Can we win something? It's tough. It's tough, but you got to stick by your team, bro. Yeah. I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm not a really a, a Knicks fan, but you know what I'm saying? I still want them to, to get a chip. You know what I'm saying? I'm more of a Nets yeah. fan. I'm definitely more of a Nets fan, especially, you know, the correlation between Brooklyn and Jersey is me. You know what I'm saying? So right. They was always my backup team. But yeah. I remember, you know, when back when they had Jason Kidd and Vince Carter, and I was like, okay. Yeah, that's when they was on fire, when he had Jason Kidd. Right. Yeah. But, yo, let's, let's break down a little bit of your career for those that are not familiar. Shabam Sadiq. Uh, originally uh, born and raised in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. He grew up in Flatbush and Red Hook and Jersey. Mm -hmm. Kind of moved around. Definitely. Jersey City, Teen mm -hmm. New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Lived in the BX too. Mm. Uh, Brooklyn, Flatbush, Vanderveer. It's my origins. Oh, you from Veer? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Damn, no oh, wonder you like that. Oh my god. 1368, New York and Forster. You know what I'm saying? That's, that explains that a lot. My childhood, man. <laughs> Word up. That was my childhood right Veer there. Yeah, crazy. Shout out to all my my, my, my Veer folk, you know? Mm-hmm. And by folk, I mean just people. I didn't mean Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Just just for the record. Yeah. Everything I don't, involved, I don't get involved in that gang gang and stuff. <laughs> yeah, everything that. gang affiliated now. You gotta explain shit. You, know you say you say homie or I'm talking about my cousin. I said my cousin. They're like, oh, you crip now? Whoa. Whoa. I'm talking about my actual cousin, man. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just hip hop. I'm just hip hop. Yeah. But, um, but when when did you first get that passion for the for hip hop, the, the culture, and and then get the get that MC bug to want to pursue being an MC. I mean, the passion, the passion for it and the interest always been there since a kid. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, if you listen to my, um, the first song on Timeless of the Collection, it's called Black Book Sessions. And I kind of, you know, in that song, in the first first verse, I explain to you how, how really, like, I got interested in hip hop. And that's as a kid, walking through the train station with my mother and seeing those trains rolling to the stop, you know what I'm saying, full of graffiti, mm. you know what I'm saying? I 
I don't think the kids really get that nowadays because you know they, they got right. the new trains, them shits is silky, the, the the paint slide right off of it. But you know, back in the days when I was coming up, um late 70s, early 80s, I was a kid, like those trains used to roll into the station covered with graffiti, bright, ill colors. And like that shit automatic. Yeah. Big, huge pieces. And that automatically made me want to be involved with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I love to paint. I love to, you know what I'm saying, get busy with the markers. Right. Shit. And then, you know, the music really tied it all in together. Right. For the young folks, go watch Wild Style and uh, Beat Street to get a little bit of that kind of feeling. Oh, yeah. Those are my shits, man. Wild Style, definitely one of my favorite movies. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We sampled that for um, the Crack Kills project coming out with Sa Sav, Jamel Rockwell, and CX Kitronic. The song's all about graph. And we got we got oh, crazy ass Shazzle York on it, and your and your boy uh, uh, Elder Sensei. Yeah, me and El Elder Sensei got an El Graffiti song called Graffiti the World. Mm -hmm. It was on that same project, Timeless of the Collection. Right, right. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what really got me interested in hip hop. You saw the trains first. The trains, the trains and the graffiti was first for me. Right. And and what about the music? The music came later. You know, I had a couple friends who, you know, had like um, uncles and older brothers that collected records. Right. And, um, one friend in particular, we used to go in his basement, and we used to play all these records. You know what I'm saying on a on a turntable. You know, of course, the turntable didn't have the belt, so we could scratch. But some somehow he rigged it, so he was able to mm -hmm. scratch on it. But we used to listen to all kind of shit, man. Um, uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, and mm. you know what I'm all kind of obscure records, all the way up to the most popular. Right, you know so Andre Harrell. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So. You know, the disc masters, you remember them? Mm hmm <laughs> Nah, yeah. And, you know, between Mr. Magic and Red Alert, going back and forth on those on those stations, right. you know, we would hear stuff and be like, who is that? Mm -hmm. Of course, Google wasn't available, so mm -mm. you had to go up in the record stores and be like, yo, play them something on the Walkman from the tape. You know what I'm saying? What's this song? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't no Shazam back then. Nah, not at all. <laughs> you had to go in there and look, go in B Street, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And find these records, you know what I mean? And, and some DJs would scratch off the labels on the vinyl. So oh, yeah, so you can't look, look over their shoulder and see. What you playing? <laughs> <laughs> can't see what's going on, man. I had so many stop and go tapes from uh, Red Alert Show. And Mr. Magic. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. That's Red I'm Alert. Doing. Rest in peace to Mr. Magic. Red Alert did a party not too long ago in Brooklyn. Killed it. Man, come on. How could 60, he not? In his 60s, still killing parties. Yo, because his his music knowledge is vast. Are you crazy? He hip hop, been punk, soul, reggae, man, house, like, doing it all. He's a shaman. He's a fucking record shaman. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Seeing him, somebody who's double my, almost double my age, still doing it, is inspiring. That shows me that this culture is here to stay. And, and people say, "Oh, you too old to do this. You too old to do that." Listen, if you're dope at what you do, and, and, and you you know you're doing it well, and that's it. Yeah, that's it, man. The skills speak for themselves. I don't care if you're a 50 or 60 year old rapper, it doesn't matter. Wow. You're dope. If the art is dope, because we got to start looking at it like jazz and rock and roll and the blues. Yeah, I hate when people try to put an age limit on art, man. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Music and DJing is not like sports. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get so physically old where I'm not going to be able to rap or you know what I'm saying 
it's just it's crazy, man. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Anything, the older you get, you should have more to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You should have more wisdom to share, more experiences to put in songs. So right. understand how age limit could could be a factor. I, I just feel like certain things need to be age appropriate. You know, right. what I'm you can't be talking about young boy shit as an older man. You gotta grow up, be mature. The same way they have adult contemporary rock, we need adult, adult contemporary, contemporary hip hop. Hip -hop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for people that you know, what I'm saying, is paying bills, paying mortgages. Got kids in college, you know what I'm saying? We still listen to rap. You don't have to right. go and listen to old shit. It's new shit that we can relate to. It just has to be put down in a certain way. Yeah, it, it, it's funny how age and your perspective changes. You know, me growing up and from Brooklyn, I'm from Flatbush as well. You know, I, you know, I'm I'm married now. I'm thinking about having kids. You know, we're we're gonna have kids. Working on it. And I'm like, damn, you know, I don't want my kids to be in the same kind of violent situations that I was in growing up. I want better for them. But at the same time, I don't want them to be punks. I want, I, I want them to be soft like baby shit, like, you know? But, so it's like, I don't want them to be around too much craziness. But I don't want them to be soft, but then... I like all these nice restaurants that that gentrification brings, but it's it's like a balance. It's you know, yeah. I, like, I want like to have that culture, but also street. You know, like, like you know, both. Both. I feel like it's it's you gotta season your kids a certain way. Like you know what I mean. You mm -hmm. definitely don't want them to be punks. You know what I'm saying. You, you try to. Encourage them to join martial arts. You know what I'm saying? Right. You 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 want them to be able to know their way around a gun. So, you know, you take them to the range. Right. Know? Down here in Georgia, you know, it's more it's more liberties as far as like um firearms and stuff. I see 12-year-old girls in the range busting right. pistols. You know what I'm saying? They're getting the proper instructions, they know how to breathe. Mm -hmm. you know, let it go, blah, blah, blah. and they doing their thing. You know what I mean? So right. um, I was just at a range in Maryland a couple of days ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just depends on how you season your kids, man. You know what I mean? Um, me personally, like, if, if my kid wants to be a nerd, if they're involved in, you know, they like computer stuff, and that's what they're into, I'm gonna let them be them. You think? Right. Of there's a lot of the people that I thought were nerds and I thought were square are doing very, very good right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Real good. So I encourage my kids to be themselves. But right. really, your kids are watching. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now that I, my son is like 20, you know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, my other daughter's 21. And, you know what I'm saying? I got older kids. I, I know that they were watching. They were looking, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Probably ain't noticed, but they were looking because I see a lot of myself in them. You know what I mean? Yeah. By the way, speaking of martial arts, I know you told me that you recently been to start training in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. How is that? Kicking my ass. <laughs> I said, it's kicking my ass. I ain't gonna lie. I, like, I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It show you techniques. You know, for a good hour. Grappling and rolling. Tiring, though. Man. And then they make you roll for the last hour. The rolling part is the part that, you know what I mean? I be exhausted, man. Sometimes I'll be like, man, should I be taking this shit at, at the age I am right now? <laughs> it's yes. I know people who, who are 70, 75 still training. Man, listen, man. Ooh, I know old men will do more push-ups than we can. And we'll, we'll listen, push. when we doing the, the rolling part, you know, it's different belts in there. They got purple belt, whatever. Blue, you know, brown purple, belt. brown. Yeah. Brown. Right. And you, the way this class is structured, you got to roll with all of them, even if they tap you out. And really? man, boy. That's how you learn. 
that shit is exhausting though, bro. And it's humbling, right? Hell yeah, motherfucking little dude put you in a fucking arm bar. You be like, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 I'm, yeah, you got to tap the fuck out. And if you don't tap out, you think you tough and you don't tap out. That's how you get hurt. The pains. Yeah. You I'm got to tap you, out. You're going to damn dude was body. choking me out. And I think I, I tapped out a little too late, man. My Adam's apple was hurting for days. Pause. But you know what I'm saying? I well, should you got to know what I'm tap. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning. You know what I'm saying? It's not a macho thing. It's a saving your body thing. Yeah. But listen, as you get more into it, you're going to make people tap too. You, you know, that's just how oh, no, I didn't tap enough people out, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't got um, higher belts and in, in more compromising positions. I just didn't know how to do the finishing moves. Right. And like I get them in position, and, you know what I mean? And I got them, but then you got to know that finishing move. Like, you know what I mean? Right, it's right. Interesting. Doing any any kickboxing and any striking as well? Nah, not yet. Okay. Yeah. But you was always nice with your hands. Yeah. I, you know I, what I, I see you handle a few people that was acting up over the years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I just just swing and, and try to land those, but I definitely want to get into more striking techniques. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think it's important to know. You know what I mean? To be able to wrestle and of course. Tie the fuckers' arms up and shit. You gotta man. know both. You gotta know how to strike, stand up, mm -hmm. ground game, all of that shit. Yeah. So I'm doing a little bit at a time, man. I really, really, I'm doing this shit to stay in motherfucking in good health, man. You yeah, know? look at, um, you know, the comedian Joey Coco Diaz. He does BJJ and he lost a lot of weight. I know. You know? Even um, what's his name? Um, uh, Ed O'Neill, uh, Al Bundy. Mm -hmm. He had a black belt in BJJ. My boy who got me in it, he lost a good like a hundred pounds. Yeah, I'm trying to lose weight myself and trying to get more healthy. You know, I'm, I'm doing you know jujitsu, karate. Type stuff. It's really about the diet, bro. Like. Right. Because you can work out every fucking day, but if you don't change your diet, you're still going to be fat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I lost so, like five pounds, but I need another 120 or so. You know, yeah. I'm working on it. That BJJ class is like 15 or more 100 calories. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll be drenched. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just after one class, I'll be wanting to take off for like two, three days. I <laughs> One day, Max. One day. It'd be tough, boy. I got a I got a karate shirt, a Kyokush Brooklyn Kyokushin shirt that says, um, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, you know how he trained. You know, seven days of no training makes one week. Like W E A K. Oh, okay. So, yeah. You got always you if know. you take off too many days, you be like, ah, it's like you're starting all over again and shit. Right. I mean, some things, but you gotta I, I think for me, minimum three days a week. I try to keep up. Yeah, I got so much shit going on though. Like I be juggling, man. I'm in here juggling. Right. Well, you got your MC, you own a barbershop, you cut hair, you paint, you got a family. Got a clothing line, jujitsu, right? Tours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But health is important, man. We we was talking about that off camera. Too many people. Oh, that shit is very important. Way too many people that we know or we know of have died in the last five, ten years. Mid middle aged rappers who easily, you know, I know sometimes it's drugs and alcohol. But a lot of times it's just poor eating habits too. And a lot of times it'd be like just knowing what's up with your body because if you don't, if you don't go and get regular checkups, it could be something stupid and simple, man. Like, right. Like one time I was in a studio session, you know what I'm saying? And I'm feeling these pains. My bro was like, yo, go get them pains checked out. Matter of fact, I was at still 
Still house one time, okay. and, you know, I'm feeling this pain to the side. I'm like, oh, like, oh, shit. But, you know, I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm recording with my bros. I wasn't really ready to leave right then. I want to finish what I'm doing. You know, just go to the bathroom? It was, it was it could be a liver like spleen thing. When you're big, and you're, you have enlarged nah, organs. It, and, yeah. it wasn't none of that. It was my appendix. My appendix was bursting. Oh, wow. But I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So finally, motherfuckers was like, yo, you got to go to the hospital. So I hopped in the cab and went to the hospital. And sure enough, they was like, yo, glad you got here in time because yeah. your I appendix was closed the window. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's working outside. Yeah, but help, you know? Nah, yeah, man. That shit was that shit was real though, because they was like, yo, if you'd have came any later than that and your appendix would have burst in you, you could have been dead. You know what, what, what happened with Pumpkinhead? He had gallstones. And you know, yeah, probably you know, a, a earlier checkup, it could have been handled properly. Right. Well, I'm, I'm not sure the situation with him, but it's health, health we, in general. We, gotta, we yeah. gotta lose weight, we gotta eat right, prostate, uh, get your you know, prostate checked, all kind of shit. Motherfuckers don't be wanting to do that though, they be like. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but you gotta do this shit, man. You know I'm, I mean? I'm 38, turning 39. I'm gonna start getting it checked. Look nah, at, you know what I hate though. I hate when you go in there. You know? I went in there. I was like, yo, I want to. I want this, this, and this check. They're like, oh, we normally do that when the person is 50. So you mean to say, like, if I tell you to check it right now, I gotta wait till a certain age, and then when you check it at that age, and you be like, oh, it's a little too late. Then when the fuck are you supposed to get a check? Nah, you get it checked. Like I said, look at Chadwick Boseman. He was in his early 40s. You know? Yeah, if they would have detected that earlier, he could have he lived. But they put in fucking age requirements on certain checkups when it shouldn't be like, oh, we normally don't check for that until you're in your late 40s. Like, motherfucker, I'm telling you to check it right now. It might be too late in my late 40s. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I don't know. It's a catch-22, man. I, I try to go and get as many checkups as I can. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I definitely spend time in a, in a health food store. But, you know, I, I hear so much stuff. Who knows what's, what's right, the right thing to do. Right. Now, so much information and so much false information. You'd be like, oh, word. I don't know. Right. I know pretty much, you know what I'm saying, with that COVID shit, that um, the CMOS definitely helped. Mm -hmm. Elderberries definitely helped. For me, black seed oil, codfish liver oil, elderberry. Black seed oil, uh, too, uh, zinc. You know that shit is nasty as fuck. The black seed oil, I take it every day. I put, I put little drops in my water. That should take over my. I whole take a, I take a tablespoon every day. Mm, I couldn't take a tablespoon. That should be. I wouldn't be able to get that taste out of my mouth. You know what I do? I take my vitamins after, and my vitamins, the chewables, are more sweet. Yeah. And then have a shot of OJ, and I'm good. Hmm. So much shit, man. So much information. Right. So much false information. Yeah. I'm doing another YouTube show called Rolling with Ronan. I'm telling, telling the world now. So I'm gonna have you involved in that, you know? I hate rolling. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be tired as fuck, boy. I'll be like. <laughs> Word up. All good. But yo, let's, let's go back to the music. Let's talk a little more about, you know, how you got into the game. So you were inspired by you know older people that that you know were DJing and Mr. Magic and, and Red Alert. Mm -hmm. So when did you first get that passion for MCing and how did that develop from there? Man, I had a 
it was a it was a few few people that sparked it, man. Like, mm-hmm. um, I had a friend in high school named Mark. He was the first person I actually seen in person that was like, like had full crispy rhymes, like, mm. and put together. And that shit excited me. Like, yeah, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? I could do that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, my, I had a stepbrother. His cousin was nice too, and he had like fully constructed bars you know what i'm saying and one time at a barbecue like he was just going in and i was like yeah yeah that's when i got the bug for like one right you know what i'm saying and be they ever go anywhere either either one of these guys oh uh, no nah, no nah, not really not as far as i have but right you know what I'm saying? they still dope in their own right you know okay. what i mean but um they the first people I, I actually seen do it that made me want to be like, oh shit, like, yeah. I got to memorize my shit. And so you started it, writing uh, and uh-huh. what you was doing, open mics? Um... Man, I was doing demos at, at different people's cribs. And you know, like um, late 80s, early 90s, it was like about four tracks and, um, you know, little sample machines and, and doing little demo tapes. But, um, not until I moved to uh, Teaneck, New Jersey, and started messing with uh, with Nick Wiz, to, did I make like professional demos? Okay. Yeah, Nick Wiz been had no beats. Yeah, long time. I, made, I started making demos that people actually wanted to fucking play. So we're talking about you were working with Nick Wiz out in Jersey. Oh yeah, when I when I moved out there, I moved out there like. You know what I'm saying? Maybe like mid high school. You know what I mean? And I started making like professional demos, like, but I was still running around, you know, doing little blaze battles and battles mm-hmm. in New York. And I was, you know what I'm saying, doing like um uh, You battle anybody that, that we might have heard of in, in the Blaze battles and all that? All kind of people, you know, MCs change their names and <clears throat> right. All kind of street battles and all kind of shit, man. You know what I mean? Right. Like it was different. It was different back then. Like you really had to like run up on DJs with actual vinyl. Like yo, mm-hmm. play my shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I couldn't send an email. Like yo, yo, here go my right. joint. I had to really physically be there for people to play shit. You know what I'm saying? What DJs were you never... dealing with um, early on, and then later on? More so, the difference. Like, like, what DJs were you dealing with when you were coming into the game and, and, and during the Rockets era? I mean, well, Stretch Armstrong and Bob Beetle was definitely like um, a force back then, and they and they would support right. my shit. They played like um, I had a song called "Do or Die" that they were playing heavy, which was a demo, and I never came out with that song, but they was playing the heavy. Mm. Um, Stretch Armstrong. Did you ever go up there? Mm-hmm. Did you ever go up there? Yeah, I went up there. Matter of fact, the first time I went up there, that was the only time I met Black Rob, and this when he was rolling rest with peace. Crew. Yeah, rest in peace, of Black Rob. Wow, crew, I remember them. Yeah, he was rolling with Crew, mm-hmm. and I, I actually met him before he came out. But the first time I was on Stretch Armstrong and Bobito. Guess who I was rapping with? I was fucking freestyling with Black Thought. Mm. I was oh, uh, that was telling me that before. I remember that, right? Yeah, like they threw me in a fucking shark infested water as soon as I came <laughs> up there. Like, yo, yeah, rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I did. I heard pretty you good. held your own. Yeah, I held my own. So you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? They, they gave me that respect. I was up there a few more other times. You know what I'm saying? I definitely used to go to um I remember when um Evil D was on Monday, was it Monday nights? Monday or Sunday nights on Hot 97. I was up there. I used to go to Martin Moore and Mayhem. Okay. You know what I'm definitely Eclipse show Mad Love, halftime radio show and all that shit. Eclipse. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I used to hit up all those shits, all of those Underground Railroad. Mm, yep. You know, different shows coming up. There were so many, you know, and they were instrumental in helping me come up because, you know, by the time I came out with like Arabian Nights and um, Five Star Generals already, I was, you know, I was getting a little spin from everybody. Right, right. Red, Alert, Red Alert broke one of my records. Um, He had the five o'clock free ride, which was during um rush hour. You know what I'm saying? So people be hitting me up. Yo, I heard your shit. I was in the car. You know what I mean? During rush hour. Flavors with uh, Molly Ma. Um, yeah, Molly Ma definitely showed love on Future Flavors. He played a couple of my joints. You know what I'm saying? That definitely was an honor for me because Molly Ma is like one of my favorite producers right. ever. You know what I'm saying? A lot of records he produced, I love. Right, um, right. Yeah. How did you get involved with with uh, uh, Raucous and Lyricist Lounge and all that stuff? Well, Lyricist Lounge, I used to harass them motherfuckers. I used to be Danny and Ant and them. Yeah, I used to Shout be. To them. I was always trying to get on the mic <laughs> during one of their events. Yo, let me get on. Let me get on the mic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But really, I met them through Nick Wiz too because they had a project that they were putting together with Echo, you know, the clo clothing line Echo. Right, right. And they had these shits called Echo Unlimited Airplay, which a tape came with a certain amount of gear that you bought or with certain t-shirts or whatever they had, this Echo Unlimited. And I think I was on like two of them, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that was my introduction to, um, to Ant and Danny, you know what I'm saying? Echo was so supportive of the hip hop culture. I mean, Echo was a graffiti artist, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? I used to remember seeing Echo tags in the in the illest fucking places. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He just learned how to flip that into a money making opportunity. Right. You dig what I'm saying? And I respect. I used to like Echo. It's just a shame that you know it, it's not where it once was. You know. Um. You know when restaurants be small and they be good as fuck and then when they expand and they get bigger mm -hmm. they're not able to keep that same taste because they got to mass produce a lot of shit. Right. I think that's what happened with Echo. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And also it, it loses its coolness once too many people start wearing the gear. Well, you got to flip it up. You know what I'm saying? You got to come with different lines. Right. Echo, he should have just came with a different line with a whole different name. Yo, this is this is for this market. Right. Do shit like Ralph we doing. Ralph would come up with denim supply, the, the rugby, you know what I'm saying? He'll switch it up. He'll have different right, right. sections for different shit. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Echo probably should have did that. He should have, you know, let the rhino go for a minute and then go jump on something else. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? Mark Echo Collection, but it didn't really catch on. Yeah. You got to experiment with shit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to just destroy it completely and come back as something different. Right. It worked. You know what I'm saying? By the way, you, you, you mentioned Five Star Generals. That was a big tune. How, how did that come about? I mean, you know, Spinner's my brother, so. Right. Shout out to him. DJ Spinner is from the Illinois. I was talking about we, him yesterday. Yeah. We, um, we, used to, we used to do a lot of work out of his uh, studio, the Thingamajig Lab. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Five Star Generals was like a series of songs that we had did around those times. Like we did Lyrical Fluctuation with Pharaoh and Kwali. We did on um, Five Star Generals with me, Eminem, AL Skills, Quest of Mad Lad, and Scam. Right. Um, Scam did the the other record with 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 um with Slim Shady. I forgot the name of that. All of those were oh, done around was, uh, visual art. Yeah. yeah, right. Nah, but he had Scam had a record with Eminem too. That was right, right. No, I know. Yeah, all of those records art. were were done around around that time, you know what I'm saying? 
Right, right. So we were all, you know, just working in and out the lab. We did a lot of that polyrhythmatic, that first album around that time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those who don't know, Polyrhythmatic is a group with Shabam Sadiq, DJ Spinner, Apani, and Mr. Apani B. Florence, and Mr. Complex. And then later, of course, in 2007, we came back with the part two. Right. Um, and we had Ty Phoenix in the mix. Mm -hmm. When Apani. That was a good project. Yeah. I still got that t shirt uh, from that project. I want to do I want to do a new polyrhythmatics album with the with you know the adult contemporary theme mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because we all grown up we all got kids in college we all like grown up grown ups and right. the dynamic of having two female MCs and two male MCs I think is is, is dope that'd be dope to have a Pony anti Definitely. on the same album yeah mm -hmm. you know what I mean but you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to coordinate for grown ass people, you know what I'm saying? Unless they really, really want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I understand that. Mm -hmm. And that was a big era though for, for independent hip hop, you know? In, in oh the, yeah, the, man. In the world. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I was on so much shit. I was on um Independence Day that was on um on um, nervous records. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So many like guest appearances. Um, I also was part of the uh, the jazz band, um, Us Three, US Three. Mm. I was I was a I was the guest rapper on on their second album, Broadway and Fifty Second. Okay, I'm saying which was an experience in itself. You know what I'm saying? I, first time I really got to tour the world. You know, mm. it was I like I like how jazz supported hip-hop certain people in jazz herbie hancock and miles davis as well did a whole album easy mo b mm -hmm. <clears throat> the way they you know yeah and that was around that time where you know guru was doing jasmine taz right you know i'm saying um i got put on to that project by um chub rock mm. who used to work with nick wiz Another and black bush legend mm -hmm. yeah. and he had the um he had an AR position up at um at Blue Note, or really was Capital. And, and Blue Note was under that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah, and I got put on to that shit. Shout out to Chub Rock. Still right. this thing. Yeah. Right, right. So, you know, all those things came together and gave me a, a career to run with. Right. And you had the Rockets run, and then from there. Oh, what, was the, what was the label your first album came out on? Raptivism. Raptivism, right, right. Because we had a, they had a project called No More Jails, which I was on, mm -hmm. and a few other artists. I remember, I remember, um, yeah, it was a few artists on there, man. But it was about No More Jails, basically like right. jail reform, and um, which is important. Yeah. People were doing crazy numbers, football numbers for for first time drug offenses, and mm -hmm. other people are doing eight, nine, ten years for murder. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Matter of fact, the event that we like performing that. at in St. Louis on the fourth is about jail reform. Mm. So, oh. you know what I mean? That's gonna be pretty fly. But yeah, they was the first to um, Raptivism was the first to give me like a solo deal after I left Rockets. Right, right. And I remember I got that one on vinyl. I might have it on CD too. You know? I kind of screwed that up because I was fucking around in the streets and I caught a case mm. that Sunday after September 11th. So when it was time for that album to really be promoted, I was sitting in jail. Right. I'm and I remember, you, I think you were in double XL while you were locked up, right? Yeah, I was. I did that um, double XL interview in Brooklyn House. Wow. Yeah. She wow. was crazy. And when you came home from that bid, that's when I first met you. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, Jamel Rockwell, formerly known as Sav Kills, brought, I think brought me to the show. Uh, was it at, at the Delancey? 
Yeah, yeah, that's oh, crazy. The Delancey, I boy. think it was the Delancey Lounge back then. Yep, yep. It was different owners. Yeah, Delancey always showed love, though, man. I did right, so many right. dope events at Delancey. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Lit Lounge. Mm -hmm. The live there for like you know a good five years. Um, South Paul. Oh, I love that venue. So that was, that was my favorite yeah. Brooklyn venue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of those. Um, what's the other one in Manhattan? Uh, Factory. Knitting Factory, right? Uh, Public Assembly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Later, what the Bear Claw or some shit uh, like Black that. Bear. Black Bear. Then that's that's got me. Yeah. Almost every every venues are, are disappearing, new ones are popping up. I mean, you know, Yo, almost is. every venue I was doing stuff at before COVID is gone. Yeah, man. I, I feel like Bushwick, Williamsburg, Greenpoint, all those venues, gone. That one on 14th, where, where we did your album release, gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shit, a lot, of, even more than that, even before COVID. You know, right. I think, I think COVID kind of, Define the term only the strong will survive. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Not only strong in like physical strength, like lifting weights, but strong as far as like, you know, uh, your finances, you know, strong as far as your immune system, strong mm. as, as far as just being able to hold it down. Mentally, spiritually, physically. Yeah, everything. everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people lost. A lot of people I know died during COVID. Not from COVID, but the stress. People, you know, messing with drugs and ODing. A couple of different DJs and artists that I know. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's crazy times right now, man. Both of my um, my neighbors died, mm. and they were only like nine years older than me, bro. Like I, I seen them one week and then two weeks later, I don't see them no more. And their cars are in front of their house. And I'm like, oh yeah, they died, both of them. I'm like, what? A couple of days apart from COVID. My, next, my neighbor across the hall in my old building passed away. And mm. the four people in my building uh, yeah. over on, on Glenwood Road. Yeah. I think this shit is taking away a lot of elders. Yeah. You know what I mean? But motherfuckers gonna be outside though next month. <laughs> I'm so, back. I'm know, outside now. I went to a red alert party. You know? Honestly, I've been outside. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I caught the shit. But I've been outside. But I, you know, being a barber, I, I, I make sure, you know, I, I get tested mm -hmm. regularly. When I'm going to see my mother, I get tested. Right, my you parents know, all really, got vaccinated. All, all the elders in my family are vaccinated. All my my older cousins and parents. Yeah, I I was kind of against the vaccination at first, but now I'm like, fuck it. Might as well get vaccinated. You know, if it could protect you a little bit, and it could protect my family from catching the shit, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna just get it. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get it. But honestly, none of those things have been tested properly, as far as I'm concerned. Like, yeah. It takes, like, what, seven years to really test the vaccination? And it hasn't been that long for them to test that shit. So, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm not even getting to debate that with you. I'm going to leave it alone. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just going to take I it. I already, I already. I just want to make sure my family good. Right. And got a fight, fighting chance. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? But if, if I really had the ultimate choice, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take it. Right. But I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we're both entertainers and we got to go out and we got to come back to our families. So. Right. And I'm going to be all over the place. Like I said, right. like, I'm about to hit the West Coast with, with pause one from like the 16th to the 23rd. We're going to do like a good, like, 10 solid dates. Um, you know what I mean? 
I'm gonna be running around, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be back on the road heavy, so, merged out. So I think yeah, I, yeah. I think I need to be vaccinated. Yeah. Even though I got the antibodies, I and I had it. Still. It's different strains. People catch a shit. The antibodies last, they say, for maybe six months maximum, and that's max. So, you know. But like I said, it's so much information out here. Some of it's false. Some of it's right and exact. Right. Who fucking knows. How do we know? We Google it. Even shit on Google be bullshit sometimes. Well, I feel like that's why you got to read, you know, at real medical journals. The CDC, you know, can they, you can't the get CDC memes. <laughs> you can't get your info uh, uh, from YouTube, you know, from from QAnon people and all that nonsense. I think that's the gift and the curse of the internet, man. Like, ain't no microchip uh, uh, in, in the vaccine. You know where your microchip attracts you at is your phone, right? And motherfuckers can't leave home without that shit. Listen, I got a fed in my family. I spoke to him about it once. They could track you down to the room you're in from your phone. They mm -hmm. don't need anything else, your phone. Right. So so remember that when, when you're doing shit, leave your phone home. <laughs> wow. But yo, back to um I remember we met at the Delancey Lounge and you had that um I'm back record produced by Ayatollah. And I, I love that joint. I remember putting that in a mixtape. And we you know we me and you just linked up from there. And you, you know, you would come up by my crib. I had a little home studio. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But we did, um, Mano, we did that mixtape, me and Mano. I had well connected with PRD. And uh I had you and Mano both co-hosted. That was a big tape in the streets. Nah, yeah, that was official. Mm -hmm. I was like me getting back back into the mix of what the fuck was going on. Right. And then I had you coming over. Um, you did a rec you did some records with Killer Priest and Hellraiser from Wu Tang. Yeah, shout out to Killer Priest. And those That's records true. went everywhere. Yo, I love those records Yo, too. They were right to the top. That's my shit. Yo, that was on a Killer Priest project, a Hellraiser project, one of my mixtapes, one of your mixtapes. Yo, all of them joints that we did mm -hmm. in Harlem at your crib, fine. Right. Never mix or master properly, so I'm going to get that done now. I still yeah. have all those sessions. Yeah. No? I, that was that shit. For real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, keeping it moving, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got a lot moving. of good dropping, shows. Dropping, dropping a lot of albums. Dropping singles, really. Right now, I'm on some single shit for the summer because I got I got like four or five projects that's like ninety percent done. But you know, when you hit like a certain plateau with a project, and you like, ooh, we need like one or two more joints, mm -hmm. and you like, you don't have that joint to put the cherry on top of right. what the finishing of that project is. So you just put it to the side for a minute. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know. You know what I mean? I got a couple of albums I've been needed to drop. It's been right. a So I got one called um, Cabin Fever with Nick Wiz. We dropped one of the singles, which was Thundering, and it had that, that South Park theme. Right, I remember that. That album is, is basically done, you know what I'm saying? If, few hooks that need to be finished maybe like one or two songs but um it's pretty much done you know what i mean um i got another project i'm working on with pa dre mm. um the producer for rj Payne. okay you know I mean? he laced me with a project we got some fire on there um i'm doing another one with a nigerian producer named techzilla you know what i mean mm. That shit is, you know, in the works as well. Um, me and John Five Seven Project came out really good too. Ooh, that's my shit. Matter of fact, we doing a uh, uh, a physical release to that. I'm doing okay. with a label, you know what I'm saying, out of Germany. So that should be out soon. Um, also, I'm I'm doing a a, a double sided vinyl 
a two two vinyl release, double vinyl LP shit um, for uh, for Timeless at a collection. Okay. These these people call Hip Hop Real out of Spain. Save one for me. I'll copy. Yeah, that shit is up for pre order. It's on my website, shabamsadeek.com. Um, you know what I mean? A couple of releases, man. A couple of things going on. Yeah, you working, man. So, yeah. And then, of course, you, are, you are on the Slim and Mickens album out now. Frank Knight yeah. and Chuck LeWayne, plus Illy. Go yep. check the video for that. Plus Illy Down. Yeah, that was a fresh video. Mm-hmm. Shot during one of the low events. A lot of low in there. Pay attention. Shout out to Nacho. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh. So the Nacho event coming up again. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna be up there. Um, got the new single out, a new beginning. Right. Yeah. I already spun it before, but I'm gonna spin, spin it this week as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was crazy how that beat came about. Um, Ski Beats had like a contest for these packs, these drum sample packs they be putting out. And um, I think he sent out a Rod Digger verse. And this dude named Cuff um, remixed it. And I was like, oh, that beat crazy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he was like, yo, I'm actually a fan. I'm like, oh, word. I was like, shit, you a fan? Let me get that beat. That's funny. <laughs> you know, I've just, yo, he I've said that shit. I interviewed uh-huh. Rod Digger last week, and we were just talking about the same. The Smack Pack thing? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, yo. The Smack Pack, he he remixed one of her verses. She was crazy. I was like, oh, this that shit right there. But I, I thought it was a song. It wasn't a song. It was just a remix of her verse. And all right. the producers had that same verse. So I was like, shit, let me get that beat. He was like, hell yeah, here. Yeah. He mm-hmm. formatted it for me, and I just laid it down. I mean, that's really how I want to do the singles. I mean, I think like albums and shit, uh, it's a different energy. Like right. everything to be cohesive together. But for the singles, I'm just picking random beats and I'm I'm laying the vocals and I'm just putting that shit out. I think I'm going to be doing that all summer until some of these projects are finished like I need them to be finished. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. I definitely want to plan something out in Atlanta with you. We'll figure that out. Yeah, man, Atlanta wide open, man. It's a lot of venues, Mm -hmm. a lot of event spaces. It's a lot of ways to do it. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I think you you did an event at at your barbershop at one point, right? Yeah, we did um, Rock the House, um, Mm -hmm. Atlanta edition here. Got a, a decent amount of space. Yeah, we have about like 75 people up in here. Okay. But you know, I got a backyard and a front parking lot. So everybody wasn't packed in the shop right, at the same right. time. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was wearing masks. It was, a, it was a good event, man. You know what I'm saying? We had the PA system. They had the live broadcast shit set up. Oh. And it was a wonderful thing. It was, um, who was in it? It was me, um, John Jiggs. Uh, Indigo Phoenix, uh, Star, Ill Conscious, mm. uh, A Royale, Dirt Platoon. Mm, nice. Baltimore. Uh, Rams. Yeah. Mm. Ella Sensei. It was, it was dope, man. And, and it showed me that, you know what I'm saying? If you got property and you got a, a place, a space to do shit, you could just make it happen. Right, you, know, you don't gotta wait for nobody. For me, I was doing stuff in my backyard. Yeah, and them backyard events was beautiful too, cause you got the fucking, you got the little balcony. You know what I'm saying? Right, the patio overlooks the backyard. That's, that's it. That's all you need, really. That's that's how this shit started. That's how hip hop started. Started right. out in the park. You know what I mean? Right. You, you got some of these clubs that don't want to support hip hop. They're scared. Fucking they're club. racist. We don't yeah, y'all. We do our own thing. We, 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 we can rent the spot and do our own bar and make more money. People be forgetting that hip hop came out of the struggle, bro. Mm-hmm. The reason, man, a lot of you know DJs had fucking equipment. It's because of that blackout. When that blackout <laughs> happened, they went and they were stealing fucking equipment and plugging yeah. the shit up in the park through the lamppost on the weekend. So 
You know, once you get back to that, that's the rawest form. That's the rawest, purest form yeah. you can get. So, so, hey, some of my equipment fell off the back of a truck. That's all I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the purest, rawest form you can get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? So I ain't mad at that shit at all, man. We did it in the shop, and, and it was a beautiful event, man. We moved oh. the chairs, the barber chairs to the side. And we opened up a space and, and people came and did their thing, man. Yeah, I wanted to come out to that. I just, I don't know why I couldn't make it. Yeah. I want to do another event here at the shop. I just feel like, you know, everybody be like, oh, your shop is, is far, it's far from Atlanta. It's like, bro, get a fucking rental, man. Get a car. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's not really that far, but, you know, 35 minutes or whatever. But I'm still, I'm going to have a, a couple more events, but. Let me know ahead of time. I'll, I'll pull up. Yeah. You know? We're going to plan something. My wife, shout out to Oni. She got uh, a lot of family down in Atlanta, a lot of cousins. There was a lot of people down here. Mm-hmm. Not only in Atlanta, but, you know, the neighboring states, the neighboring counties. North Carolina, too. A lot of people move down there. Yeah. But, yo, Georgia got so many fucking counties, my G. Like, mm-hmm. Around Atlanta is, is crazy, and there's people from all over down here. I'll be meeting people from Chicago all the time, um, LA, people from, yeah, all over Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's open. It's open. It's, yeah, it's the season right now, man. We outside. I'm ready for it, man. So, yo, man, I appreciate your time. I want to talk your ear off. I know you got a business to run. I know you got tra- training to do later on tonight at the dojo. I do, too. Listen, hey. Woo! All right, I'm psyching myself up for it right now. All right, my mm-hmm. pee is going to be a sweat. Make sure you drink a lot of water. A lot of water. <clears throat> like six cups of water. <laughs> you know, get a little carbs early. Three hours before. You need three hours to digest before you roll. Word. It's not like swimming. You need three hours to digest. So I want everybody out there to go to um shabamsadiq.com. Mm-hmm. That's um S H A B A A M hyphen S A H D E E Q dot com. Um also go to Marvial And that's M A R V I A L apparel dot com. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We'll, have, we'll have the links below in the YouTube uh, information. And then, you know, same thing with um with IG, Shabam Sadiq, IG, Marvial Apparel, IG, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Me, man, check check for me. Check for the you, new stuff. You stay yeah. in the mix. You, you know, you you family. You're a big support. You were at my wedding. You come out. You always support what, what me, Frank, Sav, we all do. And you got our support 100%. The radio show, the podcast, any anything we got, you got. You know, you you likewise, man. Likewise. You know what I mean? We support each other. We keep it rolling. I'm, I'm glad to have you on. I wanted to have you on the show early. You know. I seen you had Razzy Kazzy on there. Yeah. You know Playing in Asia. Yeah. Fam, all fam. You know what I mean? Digger. Thirst word. All fam. All fam. Yeah. I'm, I'm keeping it that way. I I don't want anybody I don't respect on there, you know? That's how I feel about my, my music, like my songs. Like, you see me on a song with somebody, it's not, it ain't no, like, fly by night, like, I just paid for a verse type shit. Like, right. you see, we got mutual respect, and I like that motherfucker. That's why he on a song. Other than that, I'd rather do the fucking song myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, I'm not gonna be like another podcast and have Trinidad James over here. It's not gonna happen. Trinidad who? Trinidad James. Who? Exactly. Mike Jones. <laughs> I ain't having him on there either. <laughs> <laughs> now I ain't mad at none of them artists, man. They do their thing, man. We do our thing. It's, it is what it is. Or, but yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate Salute. you, my brother. Salute to L's. Two L's, all my low lights, all across the fucking world. You know what I'm saying? Love and loyalty. Everybody, yeah, check the barbecue. 
The barbecue is coming up here in ATL. Y'all motherfuckers, make sure. What, what is that? Um, the 29th, I think it is. Hold on, let me oh, check. What? Um, this month. Oh, I yeah, I got a gig that day. I can't make it. Yeah, but you need to yeah. make it to one. One or two. Which I need to plug that real quick. Just so y'all know, uh, on the 29th, I'll be DJing over by the Yankee Stadium. It's a charity event. Raising money for the hip hop museum, me and DJ Herbert Holler. That's, that's, that's what's up, man. Stay busy for that summer, man. We exactly. out here. We out here. It's back open. Yes, sir. Yeah. Streets, Lou, brother. I'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Peace. All right. All right. Peace, y'all.